All right, let's start part three. So now we're gonna be covering the second half of the tier two dimensions. You might have noticed that I've been pretty positive as of late. The last quarter dimensions ranked pretty darn high and had a lot of good things to say about them as well. This quadrant, however, is the exact opposite. Get ready, folks, because negative game dog is finally here. This is my corruption arc. I'm turning evil. <laughs> So yeah, I, I kind of grouped talking about them like, the, oh wow, it's even turning darker. I kind of grouped like the dimensions, like the order I would cover them in this order for like this particular reason. Because like, part three is not going to be a very positive video. <laughs> Some of my least favorite stuff is going to be covered here. Starting with probably my least favorite dimension in the game, Mysterium. I want to like the Mysterium more than I do. Fantasy mushrooms are always a fun trope, right? And this place is entirely based around that concept. Although, it's just frustrating to traverse. The mobs can be annoying, particularly those flying ones. Some of its structures confuse me pretty hard. And it was the first dimension that made me realize how needlessly dark some of these dimensions can be. Let's start with traversal. It's another dimension that's inside of a cave, similar to the deep lands. Although unlike the deep lands, there's some notable elevation to everything. I didn't mention this about the deep lands, but it's actually pretty unique for its unnaturally flat terrain. Despite being a cave, it's possible to run great distances here, and finding unexplored areas more predictable. This leads to far less downtime where you're digging for minutes on end just looking for anything really, whether it be structures or just new ground to explore. It serves to make the pacing more enjoyable. Mysterium, on the other hand, has like traditional Minecraft cave generation, it seems, just a little bit bigger. Um, it could very well not be, but given how much of my footage is boring digging, you could fool me otherwise. I really hate this one particular enemy too, the Fun Gats, I think it's how you say it. Um, there are a few flying melee mobs of the sort in this mod, but they're especially frustrating here, as the tight world generation makes them spawn very frequently. They completely blindsided me half the time, especially when trying to mine or platform to higher areas. This dimension doesn't need to be as dark as it is either. I'm gonna take these off for a second. Like, there's no light down here. I mean, it's a cave, I get it, but it's filled with mystical mushrooms, right? I can't help but feel that they should be some kind of light source? Glowing mushrooms are super cool, and could add to the progress by giving the player little beacons to aim for, dot all over the landscape. Dark dimensions are inherently a little frustrating, but they do have their place. This kinda isn't one of them. Traversal is already difficult enough, I find, and it just kinda feels like it's just dark for the sake of being hard to traverse. There's also some somewhat confusing elements to this dimension as well. Like, say, for example... Uh... This dimension has a roof? Cool, I guess, but I was really disappointed to go out there and discover that, like... It's still dark as hell out here? It appears to be nighttime forever, but I was at least expecting, like, some moonlight or something. Or heck, maybe like a mushroom-shaped moon that like glows or something? I don't know, I just want glowing dimensions so this place is easier, easier to traverse, you know? Like, genuinely, make the mushrooms underground in the sky glow a little bit, pop some holes in the ceiling, and I genuinely think this might come together for a real visual treat of a world. Right now, it's just like a dark cave with like just darkness at up top as well, you know? This is actually another dimension that used to have a radically different terrain generation, and it was the weirdest generation I've ever seen. For lack of a better way to word it, it looked bugged. It was mostly a flat surface dotted with these huge holes that legitimately looked like chunk errors and went straight down to water. Constantly getting bonked down by fungrats and having to slowly climb your way back up was practically the gimmick of the world. It was very unpleasant and while I have my issues of what it is now, I'm pretty glad that they changed this. Oh, hi there. I got one other note, and it's not so much a negative, but just something I find kind of weird. But this is the- oh, hi there. This is the only dimension in the game where one of its structures is a portal to a whole ass other dimension. Runador, which, fun fact, my autocorrect changed to run adorably. I like Runador, though we're not talking about it quite yet, that's for part four. It's just unique to see passage to another dimension work in this way. 
instead of being able to get it to it via a realm stone. I mean, you can make a realm stone for Runador, though it requires you to access the world through Mysterium first. So for all intents and purposes, this is how you access it. But yeah, aside from finding that interesting, I just wasn't really a super big fan of this one. Next we have The Abyss, a dimension based around blood and gore. Everything is caked in red, the mobs all look demonic, the trees have eyeballs in them, and the environment is, in the wiki's words, dotted with gore-based plants and foliage. Absolutely hor horrific. It, it, it's like something straight out of Harvester or the Crimson from Terraria. Too bad it's difficult to appreciate due to how dark everything is, though. Yeah, this is another dimension where my biggest issue is how needlessly dark everything is. And, uh, weirdly, it won't be the last as well. Like I said earlier, dark levels do have their place, but this is another example where it doesn't really feel like it adds anything. If anything, it takes away. In a dimension with such a visual and offensive style, I can't think of any greater injustice to it than to make it so you can't see the grass right in front of your face half the time. I gotta wonder if expecting the player to wear these goofy-ass glasses or- Oh, hi, uh! Like, I gotta wonder if expecting the player to wear these goofy-ass glasses or spending thousands of resources on torches are really part of the artistic vision with some of these dimensions. I swear, like, half of the game I'm wearing these goggles, more than my intended actual helmet for my actual armor. The game might be a bit aware of this, cause, like, it does stack with your armor sets, I don't think it really takes away from your bonuses, but it still feels kind of silly. Uh, anyway, this dimension does have some really creative elements to it. For one, I love the mobs. They all look terrifying, especially the Web Reaper, which I elect as the single scariest mob in the entire game. They're huge, and they have a striking silhouette that catches your attention from a distance, even when things are super dark. They're especially scary too when you need to enlarge one or to receive a boss summoning item. It feels like just about every one of them can inflict some kind of status ailment on you, and it's typically a different status ailment too. It's pretty unique, and it definitely serves to make some more dangerous than others, and gives you an incentive to prioritize certain ones. I also like this one, I forgot the name right now, but like, they kinda copy themselves and only a certain one is real, it's, it's kinda cool. You can also find Bloodstone here, underground, which is a resource for many useful items. One of the most interesting ones to me being the Wither Armor, which is what I'm wearing right now. It looks kind of factory default, I bet you they just haven't really retextured it yet. This suit not only makes you immune to Wither damage, but gives you a defense boost when you are inflicted by it. Situational armor is always interesting in games like this. A criticism I do have with this dimension is I find the structures to be quite boring. One is for the Lotto Man, you have like an underground thing that contains a pretty bad crop. Two enemy spawners and two boss spawners, that's pretty much it. Both the methods for getting the boss items are pretty cryptic and annoying as well, although, like I said earlier, one of them does have you do something kinda cool. Another large issue is the color palette. It's mostly red, which makes sense given the theming, although it's more along the lines of a deep lands as opposed to a Lelentia in terms of how well it pulls this off. Deep red homogenizes so hard of itself, and that's not even considering the thick red fog covering your vision the entire time. Um, and that's even when you can see everything. Like, a lot of structures and things you want to watch out for just blend in when you're running around, it makes it very hard to traverse. Uh, yeah, I guess though. It's a neat dimension with some incredible ideas, but it just has some glaring elephants in the room to me as well. Mostly having to do with visibility, and I wish there was just more variety in the structures. It's a definite contender for the Something's Missing tier, but it wouldn't have to do much to be bumped up a tier. Next is Iromine. Imagine I woke up one morning, excited to play Advent of Ascension, but one dimension overnight just disappeared from the game. Iron Mine is the single most dimension where if it were the unlucky dimension to vanish in this scenario, it would probably take me the longest to notice. It's a dimension I ultimately find forgettable for whatever reason. I couldn't even really tell you why I feel this way. It could be the that most mobs are a little too similar again. It could be the boring terrain generation. It could be the underwhelming structures. 
Heck, it could even be a me thing, as I entered this dimension pretty late in my playthrough, so maybe I just found it all underwhelming compared to some of the other ones I've seen, and I was also maybe feeling a little burnout, I really couldn't say. Like, I don't- oh, hi there. Th That's the sound they make? Like, I don't know, man, something about this place just doesn't do it for me. I can tell you it's probably not the color palette that disinterests me, though. It's very striking, golden yellow and deep black, very bold colors that absolutely stand out. Although, while these colors are strong, their impact diminishes a lot when everything uses it. Including pretty much every mob and structure. The mobs once again mostly use the same identical melee AI we've seen so much. The only one that even remotely stands out to me are these flying guys, and um, these guys that cause lightning to strike whenever they hit you. Remember earlier when I mentioned this enemy that used to be in the Haven? Meet the Orbiter, my favorite enemy in the mod that was removed when the Haven was purged of hostile naturally spawning mobs. It looks so cool to me, I love these weird abstract monster designs, I love the sound it makes, it has this gimmick where it fluctuates your gravity when you're near it and tries to kill you with fall damage and also kind of hold you in place so other mobs can kill you, it's very unique. For context, the Shulker is my favorite enemy from normal Minecraft, so I guess I just have a soft spot for monsters that screw with your gravity. Hear me out. Take this enemy, recolor it, and put it here. Like, in this dimension. Say that it lifts you up with electromagnetism or something, and it'd probably be a pretty dangerous pair to a lot of already existing monsters here. I don't know, it was just kind of a thought I had when playing this. The structures are small and not very eventful. So small, in fact, that something just feels very off about them to me. Aside from the boss spawner, they're all just tiny rooms containing either mob spawners or an NPC. One that confused me a lot even was this one called the Iro Passage, which is pretty much just a tube. Like, you go in one end, there's some stuff inside, and then you go out the other. Call me crazy here, but these tiny structures almost feel like they're supposed to be chained together into a big mega structure. Like, you can imagine that, right? It got me thinking about what if these hallways stretched across huge expanses of land, connecting these other structures like giant tubes. That'd be fun to follow them and give you an easier way to find points of interest and be a memorable unique element to this world as well. Probably my favorite thing about this dimension is the Professor NPC, but honestly, it's only because it's my second favorite way to make money besides the mineralization station. Ivermine isn't necessarily a bad dimension, but it just seriously needs something, anything more. As, as of right now, it's just easily the most forgettable dimension in the mod to me. I really don't care to return. <laughs> it's, I'm sorry. And our final dimension of the video is Christevia. And, you know, I got pretty negative feelings towards this one too. Although, it's not so much because of the enemies or the terrain generation, or any other common reason I've gone over thus far. Aside from maybe the darkness, but I feel it's more justified here because it's very easy to traverse and is literally just a cave, so like that would explain why it's so dark, although some big glowing crystal elements for similar logic to glowing mushrooms would be super cool. I mean, they do glow, but like, can you even like make out what's down there? Yeah, I'm just gonna put these on for this for this one too. There we go, that's a lot better. Yeah, it's purple. It, 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 it looks cool. I, I really like the look of this one, actually. No, no, my biggest issue with this dimension is I found myself checking the wiki and opening my menu to rearrange my items and getting confused by said items all of the freaking time. So, Christevia has this gimmick where there are a few items that come in six color varieties. You have the Druzes, Cool unique word to use, by the way. You have the crystals, and you have the gemstones. All of which can come from completely different sources and have wildly different functions and uses. This was the dimension that made me really wish I had more inventory space the most. Any opening of the menu looked like if you gave every synergy key item to the same Golden Sun character and just didn't organize it. 
Are these the ones that act as quasi-currency, or is it these ones? Are these the ones that convert into other ones? Which one of these make the boss item again? It gets even more confusing when you realize some of these are used for crafting recipes, and then things you can craft sometimes require something you can craft from the things you craft. It just left me very overwhelmed and disinterested in really wanting to dive deep and engaging with this world, or wanting to acquire just about anything you can get in this place. Assembling a rainbow of assets that come together into something cool, and it even emphasizing this by color coding some of the enemy drops, it's cool. It's a neat concept in theory, it really should work, but it just felt like too much to keep track of. I really like what the dimension is going for here, but it just doesn't come together very well and makes it a pretty low pick for me personally. And that's the last of the tier 2 dimensions. I want to emphasize again that this episode is the most negative of the four. And I kind of deliberately chose a group of ton of dimensions I wasn't particularly a fan of just to conveniently have them all in one place. Like take the bandaid off all at once if you will. And also to emphasize, just because something is super low doesn't mean it's devoid of creative elements or artistry. I guess a good way to put it is to just remember that there's a difference between bad and like least favorite. Some of these are quite well designed, but just have elements that I personally do not like. And heck, I might be in the minority here, and folks could very well enjoy the dimensions I placed very low here. Comment below if you did, maybe I just missed something with a few of them. But I think that's going to be it for part three. Thanks again to my Patreon supporters, um, Firestrike, Royal, Sean, and Great Wolf. Next time we'll tackle the Tier 3 dimensions and the single Tier 4 dimension, and this will actually be the final part of the project. And to spoil a bit here, a couple of them are really incredible. Seriously, there are two dimensions in the next episode that are going to be at the top of the list. I really enjoy some of the final dimensions in this world. But yeah, I will see you folks later. Thanks for watching.